For transthoracic lung ultrasound, let's start out with a discussion of probe selection. As a high frequency probe, the linear probe provides the greatest resolution of the pleural line. However, this comes with a penalty of greater attenuation and therefore poor resolution of deeper structures. Therefore, if you're only interested in evaluating lung sliding, for example, in ruling out pneumothorax, the linear probe is a reasonable choice. For more comprehensive lung ultrasound, however, we favor the phased array probe. The phased probe uh, provides generally adequate visualization of the pleural line, but also generates higher resolution images of deeper structures. In addition, the smaller probe footprint minimizes issues with rib shadowing, especially in acquiring images from the lateral and posterior chest. Either the abdominal or lung presets are both acceptable exam types. While the lung preset will enhance A and B line artifacts, this can make imaging deeper structures like the pleural space more challenging. Therefore, we suggest the abdominal preset is selected, especially when imaging the costophrenic angle. Various protocols exist for lung ultrasound with many point of care users employing a method that interrogates four to six regions of each hemithorax. We'll describe the protocol used by the CCUS team in which images are acquired from four zones on each hemithorax. It's very important to ensure your images are labeled at the time of acquisition. This is because unlike bedside echo, it can be next to impossible to determine the anatomic location of unlabeled images at the time of reporting. We'll discuss the naming convention generally used by the CCUS team. The first zone uh, to acquire images at is denoted R1 or L1 with letters R and L indicating laterality. This can be obtained by placing the probe at the second intercostal space in the mid clavicular line with the marker dot pointed towards the patient's head. The depth should be set at around 10 centimeters, but may need to be adjusted for patients of different body habitus, with the aim being to visualize both the pleural line and to determine whether an A or B line pattern exists. Excessive depth will make pleural line assessment uh, challenging and should be avoided. The next point to image is zone two which should be labeled R2 or L2 when recording clips. This is obtained by placing the probe at around the fourth or fifth intercostal space at the anterior axillary line. The starting depth is also around 10 centimeters. A few optimization points when imaging zone one and zone two. Firstly, ensure your probe is static with respect to the chest wall as movement of the probe may confound assessment of lung sliding. In addition, to enhance the appearance of A and B lines, the probe should be held perpendicular to the pleural line. If your image quality is low, slowly fan the probe towards or away from midline until the pleural line and A or B lines are clearly seen. In addition, when sliding laterally on the chest wall, keep in mind that the probe will need to be fanned towards the midline to maintain this perpendicular angle of being incidence. If despite these adjustments, image quality remains poor, it can be helpful to obtain images from an interspace above or below where you're scanning, sliding the probe slightly medially or laterally until a better image is obtained can also help with this. To obtain images of R3 and L3, place the probe in the mid axillary line at the costophrenic angle with the probe marker dot pointing cephalad. The depth should be adjusted to visualize the costophrenic angle in the far field. 13 to 16 centimeters is a good place to start, but often needs to be adjusted based on body habitus. In patients with consolidation and pleural effusion with a positive spine sign, the vertebral bodies are a good internal landmark to determine depth. They should be the deepest structures seen in the far field. Note, however, in patients with well aerated lung and no effusion, you will not see the thoracic spine. Next, slide the probe either caudad or cephalad so that both the intra abdominal solid organ, either the liver or the spleen, and the lung are well visualized. 
the respective solid organ should occupy the rightmost third to half of your image. If too much of your image is occupied by the spleen or liver, correct this by sliding up one to two intercostal spaces. Zone four, also called the plaps point, can be the most challenging to image in supine ICU patients. Essentially, the aim is to image the costophrenic angle at the most dependent point, as this is where pleural effusions and other lung pathology tend to collect. Starting at zone three, slide the probe posteriorly while fanning anteriorly until you are over the posterior lateral chest wall. Often you will need to push your hand into the bed or turn the patient in order to optimize this view. If pleural effusion or consolidation is present, obtaining additional clips of zone three and four in transverse orientation can provide additional information and assist with estimating effusion size. To obtain these, rotate the probe so the marker dot points anteriorly. Ensure the image is labeled with the zone and TV for transverse. For example, on the right side, this would be R4TV.